Hello and welcome to Portugal for a very different kind of video than we are used to producing. If you're one of our regular viewers you'll know that we usually do things like gardening, house renovation, winemaking, all sorts of stuff like that. But today we're doing a very different kind of thing. This is much more in the kind of filmmaking, videography, technical kind of arena. Because recently we did a test with a new camera and we asked for feedback and we had mixed response. And so I decided to do a bit of testing with two different cameras to see which one looks the best, sounds the best, and has the best kind of workflow for us. And so that's what we're gonna do in this video. We have two cameras that we're gonna be testing side by side, or sort of side by side, and they are at two completely different ends of the budget spectrum, size spectrum, and many other spectrums. We're gonna be contrasting a GoPro, a Hero 9, we also have a Hero 7, which we used for a few years as well, with a Canon R6, which I also bought many years ago, but only recently used to actually make one of our YouTube videos. And I thought it'd be interesting to put them side by side, kind of head to head, to compare and contrast some of the, the features, but mostly about the way they look and the way they sound. So I put together a bit of an experiment, we'll watch that and then we'll come back together at the end for a bit of a discussion. So this is a quick video test. This is the GoPro Hero 9 in partial sun and partial shade. There's a bit of wind around and there is no windscreen on the microphone because it came off during the filming of another video. But I'm looking here really at the, the colors, the contrast, the saturation, and how it sounds in the wind and also how stable it is. So let's compare that to the other camera. So this is the expensive camera with the widest of the wide angle zoom lenses on with a microphone on the top with a windscreen on it. And so it should sound better and it should look better because all of this is much more expensive. But so far we've not been having success with the way it looks. It's probably a bit shaky because it's much heavier to hold and my arm is outstretched. So we'll look at the stabilization as well. Although I do have the medium strength digital image stabilization turned on and the lens stabilization turned on. One thing I like about this camera is I can see the full frame off to the side of, of the lens here so I can kind of check to see where I am in the picture. That's good. Um, I'm also currently shooting with the C-Log3 profile which needs grading in post-production. There is no filter on the front of the lens, but we may experiment with that because I'm stopped down to f20 at the moment. And so everything in the background is probably in focus. Although that's not really any different to the GoPro. I'm gonna turn the C-Log off and see what that looks like now, but with everything else the same. So now everything is exactly the same, but C-Log3 is off. And so this shouldn't need grading. This should look nice straight out of the camera. It should have plenty of contrast. It should have plenty of saturation. The one downside of this is there is less image data, less bits per color channel or something like that. And so if I do want to make some color corrections because it might be a bit bright over here or it might be a bit dark over this side, then there isn't as much data to do that. And so it probably won't correct as well. But to be honest, I was struggling to correct the higher 10-bit footage uh, from the previous couple of videos. Anyway, we'll see how this looks and it will be quite interesting to compare. There's one other test that I'm going to do just to see how this looks, which is by putting a filter on the front of the camera and then opening the lens up to maybe 5.6 or something like that. Okay, we now have the variable ND filter on the front of the lens. I'm still shooting without C-Log, so this shouldn't need any grading, but we are at a different f-stop, so the background might be slightly less in focus, although this is a very wide lens, so there may not be anything that noticeable there. Anyway, I'll be interested to see how this looks with the filter. Uh, one nice thing about this is I can kind of tweak it on the front of the camera to open it up a bit to make it brighter, or kind of darken it down a little bit to make it darker. So I'm not sure how much I would want to do that during filming because particularly out here it's very very bright and I can't really see 
the, the screen very well, so it would be hard to judge exactly where that is. Uh, plus my hand comes into the shot here, but you know, maybe something maybe something like that would be would be better. Who knows? Let's turn the C log on and see how that looks with the filter. Okay, we're back in C log mode. Everything else is pretty much the same. We are shooting at f5.6. We've got auto ISO on, and I think we have had for the whole of the test. And so there is the option of stopping down the ISO or reducing it to 100 rather than the automatic, which I think is always a lowest of 800. So if we do prefer not using the filter and do prefer using this camera, uh, we could try some outside filming with uh, ISO 100. Anyway, I just really wanted to see what C-Log and this filter looks like, and so we've got some footage of that now. Plenty of footage with the microphone to see if we're picking up any shake. If I shake the camera like this, maybe we hear a bit more of that noise. Oh, it may also be these little uh, toggly things on the side of the camera that are kind of uh, banging around a bit. So I might just take those off as well. And just for the sake of one final bit of contrast, we're back on the GoPro. It certainly looks a lot brighter on this side of my face because we're probably at the, the limit of what the GoPro can do and it is very, very sunny on this side at the moment. Uh, but certainly this is a lot lighter to hold. And I think because of the settings we've got on here, it probably comes out more stable as well, which is a good thing. Uh, if we do end up using the Canon, I'll probably put the, um, the Gorilla Pod on the bottom so I can hold it in a slightly more comfortable thing rather than having my hand right up underneath the lens because that is certainly much more uncomfortable. Okay, I've come inside to get out of the wind because it is incredibly windy out there and even the microphone with the windscreen on it started to struggle when I filmed the intro. So some time has passed, some experiments were made, and some editing was done. And so I've spent quite a bit of time looking at the footage, comparing the colors, comparing the sound, and looking at all of the, the variables, uh, and also getting familiar with the workflow as well. So here are my thoughts. I think the Canon camera sounds much better than the GoPro with the, um, the media mod, which is an, a slightly better quality microphone than the default GoPro microphone. I have previously tested putting the external mic into this GoPro and there's something about the, the software, the firmware, the I don't know what it is, but it sounds terrible. That mic that sounds good on the Canon sounds really terrible on the GoPro, which is what I'm using right now, and is, and is almost unusable, which is a shame because the microphone sounds good. From a picture perspective, the GoPro has quite vibrant colors, which in some ways I quite like, but it's also got quite a lot of artificial sharpening, probably to make it look slightly higher quality. And I don't like that so much. One thing I do love about the GoPro is how easy it is. Everything is automatic. You just turn it on, you point and shoot. Uh, it's very lightweight, so I can stand around for hours talking to you lovely people about all sorts of things, whether it's our renovation work or something in the garden or something in the, in the kitchen or whatever it might be. Um, this is much easier to carry around and just to kind of stick on a tripod and point and shoot at whatever. One of the big downsides of it though is it's got a single lens, it's fixed. You can't really zoom in on stuff, you can't get close up, you can't get a nice range of shots to tell whatever story it is that we're trying to tell. Lots of pros and lots of cons of the GoPro and I think lots of pros and cons of the, the Canon as well. The big con with that is the editing workflow takes a lot more time because of the color correction that's needed. You probably would have had quite a shock when you saw the, the raw footage that came out of the camera because it looks all muddy and muted and dull. But with a bit of work, we can make it look a little bit more natural and contrasty and vibrant, which looks good. One thing for sure we will not be using is that horrible ND filter, which is kind of like sunglasses for the camera, which means you can shoot outside with uh, even in very bright sun, but it looked terrible. There's just too many layers of glass there. There's too much glare. Um, I even cleaned it, not today, but maybe yesterday or the day before when we were doing some filming. And so it shouldn't have been so horrible and misty and, and what I don't even know what happened there, but 
that is something that I will not be using. I might see if I can get a better quality one or a, just a different one, but that filter made things look terrible. One thing I hadn't thought about testing until now was the low light performance. So the GoPro is pretty good at that. You can walk into a room which is really dark and it tends to brighten itself up nicely so you can see what's going on. I'm now testing out the Canon again in the downstairs of the house here which is usually quite dark although I do have an artificial light on and there is some sun outside which is coming in nicely but it'll be interesting to compare the two cameras in this environment as well. And so I have some thoughts. I think I have a preference although it's not as clear cut as you might expect. One thing that we are not taking into account here is the price. I already own both of these cameras and so I'm not too worried about whether we use one or the other because I've already spent the money on them. But there is certainly a large price difference if you are watching this and considering, well, which one should I go for? I think the GoPro all in all is probably a few hundred euros. We also got the media mod add-on as well, which is definitely worth it to improve the sound quality. So let's say all in all ballpark 500 euros. Uh, the Canon R6, which I bought a few years ago, so it's the older model, they have a Mark II out now. Um, but that, plus the lens, plus the microphone, we're probably looking at closer to 2,000 euros. So much more expensive. And so in terms of value for money, I think it's a whole other conversation. And that's not really what I'm worried about here. I'm really just trying to find the thing that looks the best and is the best to use for me as we're producing all these videos. And so I'd be really interesting to hear your thoughts. I'll quickly flash up the different experiments that we did and you can let us know which of those you prefer and that will maybe help us make a decision. What's funny is I was not planning to turn this into a video to share publicly at all, but because we like to share our process and share the things that we're experimenting with and testing out, uh, I thought that it probably was worth sharing after all. And so if you're here for the camera review type stuff, uh, there probably isn't gonna be much more of that on this channel, but hopefully you found this useful. And to all our regular viewers, if you're not into the whole camera review thing, then uh, don't worry, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming in the very near future. Thank you for watching. Do let me know your thoughts about which camera system you prefer the look of, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.